homebrewers, welcome! Hope you're having a fantastic one. Um, I've been a little bit aloof of recent. Things are changing. Uh, I, I mentioned it on the tabs page. Patreons know what's going on. So uh, you're going to be seeing a lot more of me and we're going to be getting back to all the fun. But to kick things off, I wanted to make this because this has been playing on my mind for ages and uh, I, I can't hold on any longer. We're going to do it. Now, I wanted to create a cider that has the refreshing taste of uh, whiskey or bourbon chips inside it. Uh, people have said in the past that, can I add oak to it? Yeah, you can add oak to whatever you want. No rules, no real rules apart from keep it sterile. So <laughs> I went on the old flea bay and I bought myself some bourbon chips, oh yes used chips from barrels and then they've ground them down and then, well, they still have a lot of flavor, not a lot of tannin, which is good because I'm not a great fan of tanniny stuff, but this does have some tannin in there. So instead of doing what normal people do, which is add tannin to it in the form of tea bags or cooking apples, anything like that, we're gonna be using these oak chips and hopefully create a cider that has the taste of a whiskey. Just think, of, um, yeah, just think of it like the Jack Daniels cider that they created. It was actually really tasty. That's what gave me the idea. And I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. The worst that happened is uh, I make a cider and it doesn't taste of, it, of this. Which I actually do believe is Jim Beam. Because uh, I dumped some of this in some vodka. And funny enough, it did taste like Jim Beam. More or less. So, that being said, let's just jump straight in and let's make this, because this is a nice, simple, easy one that you can pretty much do at your leisure. So, as with all things, step one is to sterilize everything you're going to use. And I've gone ahead and I've already done that. Saves you watching me doing it for the thousandth time. So, my demijohn, which is actually a proper glass demijohn, I know, the shock shocked me too. It just happened to be the one I have laying around. If you've only got one of these water containers, use that too. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's all the same. Now, I've sterilized using bleach and washing up liquid. That's my sterilizer of choice. Use whichever one you want, but I've gone ahead, sterilized this, rinsed it until it smells fresh, but not bleachy. You don't want to leave the bleach in there. The worktop has been sterilized with bleach my hands by proxy have also been sterilized. So has the funnel, because I'm lazy and I spill stuff everywhere. The hydrometer, because we will be using that. I just keep it in fresh water so it doesn't roll around. And my spoon, because you'd be surprised how many times I forget the spoon. This has been scorched. I just pour boiling water over it, and um, that's simply because I'm lazy and it dries the spoon as well, so nothing gets stuck to it. I think I've pretty much explained what's going on, so let's, let's just get into this. So we have a lovely glass demijohn. Oh yes. Fresh but not bleachy. Now my, because my side has been sterilized, I can put things on it and it's just easy. So to start off with, we're going to be adding in the oak chips. Oh yes. So I've got 50 grams. It says, according to the destructions, Use four to six grams per liter of like spirit. We, we don't have that. So instead, I'm going to add in four teaspoons of this, of these chips. Ah, which works out at about 10 grams. Ish. If you're using a teaspoon and you roughly the same, we're going to end up pretty much the same. Saves needing to measure everything out. They actually smell pretty good. They do. Now, because we're doing this purely and simply, I've got a bag of sugar. Now, I want to add in approximately 500 grams. You don't need to be too exact, because um, some people measure it and they're like, oh, it's like 10 grams over. Ish works perfectly fine. We're going to be working within the tolerance of our yeast, so it doesn't matter. So just, yeah, and then just dump that in. And that is 
about half a bag. I know, it's terrible. Craft brewers are turning in the, I don't know, demijohns. Looks pretty good. Now, I've actually got myself some cheap from Concentrate Juice from the local corner shop. It sent me back four pounds for, well, four litres. I don't need the extra litre because the sugar is going to take up a bit of space and I've got to leave some headroom and yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Leave headroom. So since we don't have to juice anything or you know mess around, all we've literally got to do is start pouring it in. It's really handy. That's litre number one. Now we're going to pour in one more litre so we can shake this up and dissolve it all in. As well. The more liquid you have, the easier it is to dissolve stuff in. And also the warmer, but we're not doing that. We're just going for pure simplicity today. So if you wanted to make this, you could probably do it in about five minutes once you have everything. There we go. Looks, yeah, looks like urine with bits in it. So, hand over the top. Now shake this until all of the sugar is dissolved. This could take a minute. So it took a few minutes to dissolve the sugar in just by shaking it. It's the easiest way. I mean, we don't have to heat up anything and well, it's done. Looking good. It does still look a bit like Urine. Anyway, so where were we? We need to add in more apple juice. Now I am going to take the opportunity to add in some yeast nutrient. If I wasn't going to add the sugar in, I wouldn't need the yeast nutrient because it's only 5% and uh, pretty much all wine yeast will ferment to about 7% without nutrient. Useless bit of information, but I added more sugar because Cider without strength is just yeah. So let's add some in and let's get back to pouring in our apple juice. So we have the last liter. Let's chuck it in. Now you will notice that this comes almost to the top. The sugar has displaced some of the liquid so it's got more volume. So it all worked out. That's what you need to know. <laughs> so now we need to give it one last shake. This is going to mix in the fresh apple juice with the apple juice with the uh, sugar and also the yeast nutrient. So uh, I'm just going to shake this up. also gets enough aeration in there. You don't have to go nutty with aeration. People like going nutty with the aeration. That's enough. So I'm going to uh, stick the lid on. I'm going to let the, uh, the head die down. Then we're going to take a hydrometer reading. Ah! There we go. So, be back in a few. So I've left this for a few minutes just so the foamy head dies back and well it looks pretty good I have to say it is clear we're not going to be adding any pectolase or anything like that to it because well it's from concentrates already had all the stuff done I don't care it's cider I don't mind if it's cloudy if uh, if you do mind add some pectolase it's, a, it's just your thing so let's take a hydrometer reading and I'm guessing it is going to be somewhere around the 10-11% mark. Fitness last words, turns out to be 20. Dun, 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 dun. Let's give it its moment. Now, we guesstimated the amount of sugar. Like so. Using the hand thing, it's fine. If you want to be more exact, you can be, but you don't need to be. So, this is reading. 12% if it ferments to pure dryness. 
So let's pull this out. There's the 12. So it is 1.074 on the hydrometer. I'm gonna give it a taste. Yeah, tastes like sweet apples now. So we're gonna need some yeast. Now, when it comes to yeast, there are so many options. I actually really like using universal wine yeast for making cider. Some of you will be like, oh, but if you use a cider yeast, it gives you all those apple flavors and stuff. And it's true, it does. But it takes forever. In my opinion, um, I've used cider yeast in the past and it's, it's okay, but I'd rather use a universal wine yeast and then back sweeten it. That's just, that's just my thing. So I'm gonna grab some universal wine yeast. So I'm back and I have my universal wine yeast. Just keep it in the fridge, uh, keeps it for longer just keep it sealed. So quite literally all we've got to do is just sprinkle a little bit in the top. Quite literally just, just a pinch. Done. And the yeast is going to sort itself out. You can add as much yeast as you want. I mean if you want to you can add the whole packet but as a guideline it is one gram per gallon. I've probably used about a tenth of a gram but I know everything is sterilized and it's going to work. So all we've got to do is now Ugh. do that reset it because it's already got air some water in here and that's as done we have created in theory an oaked cider at about 12 percent and I am expecting this to finish at dryness because what well, we used universal wine yeast and um, yeah we're gonna back sweeten it and we're gonna see if this actually works because uh, if it doesn't work, we're going to have to come up with another plan to make this taste like I envisioned in my head. But yeah, that, that's just done. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to check out some of the other ones. Subscribe, do all the things that YouTubers tell you to do. And the most important thing of all, carry on homebrewing, guys. See you later.